to Simpler. We are three pastors, husbands, and fathers on a journey to make life simpler by holding Jesus as the core for every belief and practice. This journey has shaped us to be more like Christ, freed us from the shame of failure, and encouraged us to a deeper love of our Lord and God. We invite you to join us in the discussions that have shaped and continue to shape our lives. Tis the season, everybody. What is up? We're so glad to have your, everybody here. Also, as you can tell, we got a lot prettier of a backdrop. And no, this isn't green screen Hollywood magic. This is <laughs> the beautiful lands of Riadosa, New Mexico, right behind us. We've got trees. And it snowed this morning. We didn't know it was going to snow. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. It's beautiful behind us. We're on our pastor's retreat this year. We've had a ton of good conversations. Be sure to ask us all about it. Um, how are you guys doing? How are you doing, Ryan? Doing well. Good. Um, yeah. Enjoying the snow, enjoying the weather. Yeah. Yeah. Tell everybody how you lost your dinner today. <laughs> <laughs> so we, yeah, so we bought pizza a couple of nights ago, but the box was too big to fit in our little refrigerator in the hotel room. So we set it outside on the porch because it's been like 28 degrees at night. And it's been fine for two days. And uh, we came back to the room today and some ravens, large ravens. <laughs> huge. Huge, huge like, imagine ravens, like, like watching the Flintstones live action. Those big, <laughs> that size of birds. Had pecked through the pizza box yeah. and eaten at least three slices of meat pizza. <laughs> so my dinner is gone. <laughs> it's gone. But hopefully we'll have pizza again anyway. Yes. Or raven. Yeah. Yeah. Or raven. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Michael? <laughs> good. I had some raven for dinner. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. Like I said, we're all happy to... Uh, to be here. I'm glad you guys get to see this beautiful scenery with us when this episode comes out. So uh, entering in back to the PCC, Pierce's Culture Corner, uh, this Christmas season, I have had a something surprising happen to me, uh, I guess just through the lens of Facebook and all that fun stuff. So PlayStation 5s are out, Xbox Series X is out, all the new gaming systems are out. So those are the big Christmas gift items, right? So naturally, people are buying them and selling them, right? Are you guys surprised by that at all? No, not at all. No, no, right? It's been happening for According a long time. to, I mean, apparently Facebook has been blind for centuries <laughs> when it comes centuries. to when it comes to giving gifts at Christmas time because this has been such a norm of buying something and then reselling it around Christmas time. Especially, you find what the hot ticket items are, which this year is obviously <laughs> going to be the new video game stuff. Um, it's going to be PlayStation Five. It's going to be the new Xbox. And man, people are buying them for five hundred. And even like I have seen some people try to sell them for like twelve hundred dollars, which That's some crazy. people are going to make that money. I know there are people that want to. I mean, please. isn't that the idea of the market? Like, if someone pays twelve hundred for it, then exactly. That's Exactly, yeah, exactly. You can charge that much. But even the people that are like just up upselling like fifty or hundred bucks, which is normal, people making a profit I on I feel like it's actually abnormal. Like you to have that low of profit. It <laughs> yeah. It's actually yeah, make yeah. more than that. But even the people that yeah, so abnormal niche, maybe being charitable <laughs> in the <this> season, <laughs> not making a big profit, making some profit, people are like on Facebook Marketplace just like lashing out like crazy. Like this is absolutely unheard of. And it's it's so common. Like to me, I was, I think I told you guys before that I was offered 50 bucks to go stand in line at a Black Friday sale when I was in high school. Um, There's the office with the unicorn Barbie doll where uh, Dwight dwells, uh, Dwight dwells, (laughs) Dwight (laughs) buys out all of the stores in Scranton uh, of those dolls and then sells them to his to his coworkers and it's a whole joke of the entire episode. He even says follow la 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 ka ching <laughs> because it's so common. That's what people do. Yeah. And same thing with uh, the Schwarzenegger movie, the jingle all the way. Like people will go to the nth degree to get that perfect gift for their kids. So it's so common and it blows my mind that so many people just don't know that that happens. So if you're out there and you're tempted to comment on a post of a PlayStation, to comment on a post of an Xbox or the unicorn Barbie from The Office that it's absurd that they would resell these things. Just remember supply and demand, free market, <laughs> all these other things, and just calm yourself down, take a breath, and go, that's not the well, reason reality, for the season. If, someone, <laughs> if, someone's, if someone's bothered by that, they need to stand in line and get a PS5. That's exactly right. They need to go out and actually just get it. Or themselves. they should complain at Lowe's when Lowe's is selling wood for more than they paid for it. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's... This goes back to supply and demand. We're going to have a branch off podcast called Economics with Micah. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, my little joke at the end, reason for the season, all that fun stuff. So I think it's a good natural kind of segue into what we're talking about today. Ryan, why don't you, why don't you uh, intro us up? Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, we're going to be talking about Christmas today. And it's just a time where people, I think, feel generally better. Mm-hmm. And I think probably 
2020, we need Christmas season. <laughs> like we need something to look forward to and to be excited about. But Ryan, isn't Christmas just a pagan holiday filled with worldly traditions? Well, actually, <laughs> you know, we don't really know if it's a pagan <laughs> holiday. Uh, you, you know, I, I always, I, I grew up uh, like really in youth in the 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, where in the 80s in youth. <laughs> okay. 80s and 90s, <laughs> there we go. Where where people were really against Halloween and Christmas and stuff like that. And so one of the arguments that I've always heard is that uh, December 25th, Christmas was built around the Roman um, winter solstice, and and that you know the Christians just kind of piggybacked on that, and that really it has its roots in paganism. But no one really knows. Like er everything that I have found that feels legitimate and not some weird person's blog, uh, <laughs> um, everything that I found online that, that seems legitimate talks about how no one really knows why December 25th was the day that they picked. Now, one argument is possibly the winter solstice. There was a um, there was part of the winter solstice that, where they had a celebration called the Unconquerable Sun. And so some Christians kind of piggybacked on that and said, we serve the unconquerable son. Mm -hmm. And so some of them assigned it that. Uh, but honestly, in the first couple hundred years of, of Christianity, um, people were celebrating Christmas January 6th or 7th in conjunction with the day they believe that Christ was baptized. But, but another reason that people celebrated on December 25th is uh, there's a long tradition uh, in, in Christian culture that Jesus was conceived um, by the Holy Spirit on March 25th. So some Christians had decided that kind of the, the spring equinox or whatever, um, that that was gonna coincide with the creation of the world. So spring, newness, this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And the fourth day of creation, light was made. So they say four days after this equinox, the spring equinox or whatever, the light was made, Christ was made. And so if you add nine months to March 25th, you get December 25th. So a lot of Christians <laughs> arrived at December 25th because they associate, uh, they, they have assigned March 25th as Jesus's, you know, as Mary becoming pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So like, so I, I don't know. I mean, like, okay, maybe some people celebrated it because of the, the Roman start, you know, but like, we can't say that. We can't, what it boils down to is believers wanted to celebrate Christ. That's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. and, and what we need to remember is that Christmas is about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And if we remember that, I think these other arguments about its origin and stuff can kind of, uh, I don't know, dissipate at least, you know, if not be completely out of the yeah. out of the realm of conversation. Yeah, and I think the, I mean, if we're gonna be people who say we um, are not gonna do anything that has any kind of influence outside of Christian tradition or even like Jewish tradition, then like there's so much in life we can't do. You know what I mean? Like right. we can't, the clothes we wear are influenced by the culture we live in. The language we speak is influenced by the culture. So I think uh, the point that Christmas is about Jesus at the end of the day is really where we have to land is even, yeah, exactly. if, it is, even if it is a holiday that we are to some degree like taking over from other traditions and other religions, the reality is, is now today in our culture, at least in the West, what we recognize that Christmas is about is the birth of Jesus. And so yeah. if we can take that and say, here's what we celebrate, then we're still making Jesus known and we're still celebrating the coming of the Savior. Well, it's interesting. One, another thing that I read, this this came about later, and I'm, I'm gonna lie to you, but I think it was like sixth century, um, there, or fourth or fifth maybe. But anyway, there was a there was a, there were a lot of people and we, we saw this when we've studied years ago uh, in the 710 Pierce, there were mm -hmm. a lot of people who really struggled with whether or not Jesus was an actual person or whether he was just spirit. Mm. And, and so there was at least uh, kind of this underground movement of Christians who started celebrating the birth of Jesus to help the people who were struggling with that to make Jesus feel more tangible. Mm -hmm. so, so some people were like, well, he wasn't actually man and God, he was just spirit, he was just God, he was just, uh, like when an angel would appear to Daniel, he, he was just there and mm. then gone. So they didn't believe that he had physical form, which John uh, or the gospels actually all spend a little bit of time talking about, especially after Jesus was raised from the dead. And in Luke 24, you know, he tells Thomas, come and touch my, my side and put your finger, mm -hmm. like th there was always this question, uh, even when Jesus, like, who is this guy? Yeah. And so some Christians started celebrating his birth to help people remember, like, he was a real dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh and so I think that's kind of neat too. Yeah, well that adds I think that adds a, a lot more beauty to 
us as Christians. Because one thing you had mentioned before as well was that so much they, they they wouldn't celebrate the birth because they were more they were more focused on celebrating the death. Because through Christ's death comes yeah. uh, the destruction of sin, comes the destruction of death, the overthrowing of death, and to put in this celebration of birth exactly what you said to encourage believers to show that he is who he says he is. They did come down as a man. Yep. This is this uh, these two great holidays. Uh, Christmas and Easter, Easter where we celebrate the resurrection or resurrection day, however you want to say that. And uh, and now with Christmas celebrating the birth of Christ, we see God come down yeah. and live this perfect life and then succeed in his ministry, succeed in his uh, in what he was sent to do. Well, and here's the other thing. Like, we talk all the time how important it is to not be absolute about anything but Christ, like really. And, and so when we make absolute statements like we shouldn't celebrate Christmas, December 25th, because it's roots in paganism, we were talking earlier about how um, December 25th is when people celebrate the birth of Christ if they're in a Western culture, mm-hmm. European culture, um, where Christendom at some point or another has had a major influence on mm-hmm. the culture. If Christendom hasn't had a major influence on the culture, then they're still not celebrating it on December 25th. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're celebrating it January 6th, or they're celebrating it January 7th, uh, both dates that were attributed to Jesus' baptism or kind of the beginning of his public ministry, those kinds of things. And and so, like, it, I think I think what we need to realize is that Christians around the world celebrate the birth of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And... And like, I mean, that that's kind of the heart behind it is that we're trying to make cr- Christmas be about Christ. In yeah. fact, it, it, in fact, it wasn't even called Christmas forever. Like, right? Um, it was it was called something to do with the nativity or something to do with joy, and it was only called Christmas for the last like I don't know 150 200 years. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the origin of that? Uh, I don't remember, um, but it's it's like. Uh, it's like a mass of Christ. It kind of had its. its oh, wasn't lit- it that? Yeah, like a like yeah. a Catholic mass. For- yeah, yeah. So it was like a liturgical kind of sense. This was to Christ it. mass. Christ yeah. mass. Yeah. I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to interject that I'd like to uh, spin on that a little bit for us <laughs> as someone who is um, brown. Even though I'm not Mexican, <laughs> I'm as Mexican as you can get for not being Mexican. Yeah. Filipino culture is Hispanic culture ish. Same as well. Anyways, um, I don't really care that it was. It was like Christ mass. I'm going to use the Spanish word. So from now on, it's not Christ Mass. Instead of saying Merry Christmas, I'm going to say Merry More Christ. Merry More Christ. <laughs> well, you know, the, I think, um, don't, don't you feel like, don't you feel like there are a lot of people who get bogged down with, you know, should we celebrate Christmas or should we have a Christmas tree, for example? Um, like yeah. the, the Christmas tree, I, I mean, there, there are probably like 10 different origin stories for why we have a Christmas tree. Some of them are pagan. Some of the, like some people argue that Luther held up, uh, he was the first one to kind of as a, as a Christian hold up like living green branches to talk about the living Christ. Mm-hmm. And so like, so, okay, maybe it's, maybe it's German. There's certainly some Germanic history there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's Roman. There's certainly some Roman history there. Maybe, maybe it's Lutheran. Maybe it's yeah. like, you know, like, I don't know. I, th- I think we, we get overwhelmed mm-hmm. by all these details and yeah. wonder, like, can I have a tree? We we have three in our house. Well, I think the I think the thing to be conscious of is we always need to contextualize into the culture that we're in. Sure. And so recognizing that, I mean, even if it did come from like a a, a group of people praying for fertility and you know that kind of thing, which is mm-hmm. one of the origin stories sure. of it. Um, people nowadays. I've, I haven't ever been in a house where someone says, do you see our tree, our fertility tree? Like, <laughs> right, yeah. You know, when you come into a house we now. We have 28 kids because of our <laughs> Christmas tree. When you come into a house now, it is a recognition that it's Christmas time and they're decorating, yeah. and they're putting their kids' pictures on the tree. And yeah. So I think contextualizing into the culture, your, to your point, Ryan, the tree is not negating Jesus. As Chris, so you put no. a tree in your house. This is not a negation of the birth of Jesus. Right. It's part of the cultural viewpoint of yeah. now what we celebrate as a culture in, at Christmas time. Yeah, I mean, uh, by that logic, right? So, like, if we're going to really be strict to it, um, early Christians didn't celebrate birthdays at all. So, mm-hmm. not only, Pierce, you already mentioned this, not only were they really concerned about the death and the resurrection of Christ, they wouldn't celebrate the birth of saints because they didn't want to venerate them that way. They would celebrate the day they died because that was the day they entered into glory. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, like, really, in, in the only three times in the whole Bible that birthdays are mentioned, someone dies. Every mm. single birthday party mentioned in the Bible, someone <laughs> dies. So if you really want to look at it that way, mm. then, like, we shouldn't even have birthday parties for our kids. And, and like you're saying, Micah, like, we have to contextualize within the culture. And 
we, we can celebrate our kids yeah. without it being a pagan thing or worrying about one of somebody, you know, great Aunt Ruth dying, you know, <laughs> because she came to the yeah. party or something. Yeah. And there's just so many different cultural nuances. Like those of you who've traveled to different parts of the world, there's like weird, you know, for us in the West and America, it feels weird. Like I'll tell you one from, from um, my family's country, my country of origin, the Philippines, the, a lot of Filipinos believe that uh, if you like turn your back to a fan, like if you're sweaty and hot and turn your back to a fan and like lift your shirt up and let the fan fan you off, that that's gonna give you a cold. Hmm. Oh. Like that's, it's a cultural belief. Like it's, you know, <laughs> well, ingrained in was the culture. It, was it one of you guys telling me, or maybe it was a, like, there's a culture that believes you shouldn't sleep with a fan on because you'll get beheaded. Oh, <laughs> like, it, it's like it's like this idea that like if you sleep with a fan on, you may accidentally step stand up into it while you're asleep, or it it's may terrifying. come yeah. off the ceiling. Like, yeah. and or even like like uh, on a simpler note, like I went to Canada a eh, um, when I was like 15, <laughs> nice. and I didn't know that I get, I don't know if it's parts of Canada or if this is all of Canada, but like you don't wear your shoes, and, like you don't enter someone's house with your shoes on. Oh really? And so it, you know we're Texas, we just. I mean, some of you, my, um, some of my family, like you guys make people take their shoes off, but the most, most people have yeah. in their houses, you don't have to take your shoes off. But yeah. It was like a culture, you have to. So there's cultural nuances that are a reality and will, will always be that way. And so I think as far as Christmas goes, as long as we remember that the goal is Jesus, the goal is right. making Jesus the focus to celebrate him, then we're gonna be okay. Well, that brings us to this question though. Like if we're gonna make Christmas about Jesus, what do we do with Santa Claus? Because like Hobby Lobby last year, I saw the deal where they had a manger scene and there were the wise men and Mary and Joseph and the camels and the donkey and included in it was Santa <laughs> bowing down. Like you could have that on your mantle well, right now, you know? He wasn't there. <laughs> right? <laughs> so let's talk about Santa because I know that some people, some of you who are listening are thinking like, you know, what do we what do we do with Santa? So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Can I tell you a funny story before we talk about Santa? Yeah, about go. Santa. So I was preaching at a, a preteen camp, a kid's <laughs> camp, like third to sixth graders um, years ago. And uh, I was trying to make a point that, you know, that it would be outrageous to believe a certain thing. And I just, just wasn't thinking, I mean, I don't, Preteen camp. Preteen camp, where I'm at, I wasn't contextualized to the culture that I was preaching to. <laughs> and I said, that would be like believing that Santa Claus is real. <laughs> and yeah, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. Right. You yeah. know, we can talk about this a little bit with Santa sure. Claus. But no joke, I had a line of about 10 adults um, mm. at the end of the service waiting to just reprimand me yeah. for for that. And so it was a awkward experience. Yeah, I probably would have done it again if I had the option, but... Well, some of you uh, learned listeners are going to say, well, it, you know, isn't Santa based off of St. Nick? And there's some truth to that. Mm -hmm. So uh, St. Nick was born in uh, the early 3rd century, or late 3rd century, rather, uh, was at the, the first Council of Nicaea, was a real guy. Uh, but there's not a lot that we actually know about him. Uh, he was a bishop. He was incredibly generous. There are a lot of legends and myths about the kinds of things he did. And, and so if you're going around saying, you know, hey, he did all these miracles and signs, maybe, but there isn't anything that actually substantiates any of that. But like, uh, he, was, he was very popular and he was very generous. Well, by, by the 11th, 12th century, he had really risen in fame. And then the legends had grown more and more about how generous he was and all the things that he had done and how he would give gifts to people. And what ended up happening is uh, in the Reformation, uh, 500 years ago, the reformers said, you know, we need to be really careful that we're not worshiping saints and that we're worshiping Christ. Mm -hmm. And the church at that time was really venerating almost to the point of worship uh, mm -hmm. saints. Yeah. And so they quit worshiping and quit venerating the saints. Well, the Dutch people loved St. Nicholas, St. Saint, Saint Nick. And so they, they kept him as part of their custom, part of their tradition. And listen to what they called him. Let me find it here, because I'm, I'm gonna say it wrong. Uh, so their name for St. Nicholas was Sinterklaas. Uh, which is where we get the name Santa Claus. And so when these Dutch people ended up coming to the United States, you know, 250 years ago, and they settled in New Amsterdam, which became New York, they, they brought this tradition of Santa Claus who would leave gifts for the good kids. And then gradually that began to change and take more shape. In fact, uh, uh, St. Nicholas Day, December 6th, was celebrated for hundreds of years and people would give each other gifts. And so when the tradition was brought to the States, a couple of hundred years ago, they combined St. Nicholas Day, December 6th, with Christmas and made it all into one hmm. story. And so that's, that's, that's the origin of, of him. But I, I don't know, I don't, I don't have a problem with the guy at the mall, you know? And, uh, <laughs> and 
I don't know. All right, what are your thoughts? I, I think, I mean, as far as like you're talking about the cultural aspect of it, um, no, I don't have a problem with it. I think where the problem can come in, especially for those of us as parents, I'm sure you're not quite there yet. You know, your daughter's not old enough to really understand yeah, yeah, yeah. these things, but for not those of us- Not a real parent yet. Not a real, <laughs> someday. Yeah, exactly. Someday, Six months. <laughs> even though you um, are on the brink of it, you know, in the next yeah. year or two. You, but I think um, the problem comes in when we as parents begin to attribute um, characteristics of God mm. to Santa Claus. Like we just watched Home Alone 2, well, Home Alone 1 and 2 mm-hmm. this last week when we were setting our Christmas stuff up. And I've forgotten about this, but the in, at the end of Home Alone 2, um, what's the kid's name? Stuart, I think, who drinks the Pepsi and always wets the bed. Remember. Like they're waking up on Christmas Day in this in this huge hotel room in the Plaza Hotel in New York. And he tells everybody, he wakes them up and says it's Christmas and someone else goes, goes, but Santa doesn't visit hotel rooms. And he goes, but Santa's omnipresent. He goes mm. everywhere. So that's a cultural movie. Yeah. And so I think that's where the problem comes in for us is when we attribute God characteristics to something like Santa Claus. And then um, at some point in the kids' lives, they grow up and go, yep. oh, I realize Santa's not real. So so if we've told them all these things about God yep. mm-hmm. and all these things about Santa Claus, and then at some point they realize, they grow up and go, Santa Claus isn't real. What keeps them from thinking that all the things we've told them about God is not real. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Well, in response to that as well, I have two stories. Two stories. I know it's personal experience, but yeah, we'll yeah. go into personal application as well. <laughs> um, two stories that flow into one another um, go along those same lines, Micah. Um, first one, I used to dress up as Santa Claus. Big dude. Big dude. They're like, hey, can you put on a red coat and put on a fake beard for me so you can be Santa Claus at my Christmas party? No and one's ever usually, asked me to do that. Usually, it's like 50 to like 200 bucks. So like, yeah, I'll go sit yeah. at a party and watch you guys unwrap presents and maybe there's some drinks. I don't know. So like, but there was one time I was asked to do it for a school and they had me get dressed up kind of outside of, uh, it, was at a, it was at a friend of ours house. She was a teacher. So that she asked me if I could come to their event and it was at her land outside of San Angelo. And um, they got me dressed up, they came and picked me up, and then we drove in to the property. And when they saw, when the kids saw the car, I'm not joking, every single one of them sprinted out. And for you guys listening, I think I've told you guys, I've used this analogy before. If you've seen the videos of like the girls chasing the Beatles, like that's 100% what it was, was they surrounded the car, was like banging on the car. I got out, I couldn't move like two inches at a time, just as steps. And there was all of these children pleading me, begging me for gifts, screaming they've been good, all these other things. And just like, just Santa, Santa, look at me, Santa, look at me, acknowledge me. And just like put, take it on my coat. I'm trying to keep my beard in place. I'm trying to keep my pillows in place as well. <laughs> like, and uh, and I read my story, I did all that stuff. And there were some sweet times there for sure. And I got to say Merry Christmas to them. But that, f- that first five minutes made me say never again, like never again. Cause it's, cause it's so real. And um, to them, to, yeah. to them mm-hmm. that it, this, this is this is the epitome of like I don't know like I'll go to the second part of the story which ties into what you're saying. Um, it's so real it begins to make them question certain things because there's certain attributes tied to Santa that is tied to God. Um, and that second story is this: I have a friend who works at a daycare. Who used to work at a daycare, and she actually told me she was like, "Well, your stance on Santa Claus, like, yeah, I was starting, I was starting to form this stance on Santa Claus of like." I'm, I'm nervous about this. Like there's so much attachment to it that can be so unhealthy. And I know that's not the popular case. I know that's not the case. Um, I know, I don't think you mentioned before, but you, you'd mentioned like you grew up with Santa and yeah. I mean, it wasn't, yeah, we, it, was, it, it wasn't no thing. Yeah. Like and I did the same thing with me. I mean, I, Milk I, and I, cookies I and, hid the cookies yeah. and I hid behind the couch and I wait, I did all those, those goofy things. And most people have those types of stories, but then you have a situation like what my friend went through at her daycare where this son had one of the older students tell him, excuse me, this boy had one of the older students tell him that Santa wasn't real. And his first question when his mom showed up, he was bawling, weeping. His very first question was, mommy, what's this mean about Jesus? Yeah. His first question. And uh, and ever since then, that friend and I have had, <laughs> it wasn't, she didn't uh, push aside my thoughts anymore, my concerns anymore. Yeah. Because there seems to be this, this nuance within culture where we are attributing godly characteristics to sure. myth, to a yeah. fairy tale, to, to, to a cultural nuance. And it's, it can't be, overall, that's not good. That's not healthy. Well, the example is gonna feel dark and out of sorts maybe, but the example that I've used a lot is my kids have never had nightmares or fears of monsters being under their bed or monsters being in their closets mm-hmm. because I've never told them that there were. And I've never hidden in their closet with a scary mask on or done anything like that to, you know what I mean? To yeah. enforce that idea. Um, a story that I've shared before, maybe not here, but 
when we would spend the night, my sister and I were at my grandmother's while my parents would go out to dinner or whatever. Uh, my parents would come back late and pick us up and take us home. And my dad would wake me up with a really scary mask on as he was carrying me to the car <laughs> and say, wake up, Ryan. And like, I'd wake up into this terrifying face. And so you begin to feel like, what if there is something that's gonna get me? Yeah. What if there is, mm-hmm. you know? And, and I, th- I think we don't realize that about kids. Like, again, I, I said a moment ago, I, I don't have a problem with the guy uh, at the mall. I don't have a problem no. with, you know, the, the Santa decorations. I don't have yeah. a problem with putting out the milk and the cookies. I, I really don't. I, I do think that there has to be in our language something where we're making a distinction between who he is and who God is. Yeah. And one of the things, Mike, I think you've mentioned, maybe you can talk to it a little bit, is with Santa, there is a performance-based reward system. Yeah. And with Christ, it's a grace-based reward mm-hmm. system. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, uh, I think there's an aspect where even though that's true, there's something in us, I don't know if it's cultural or just innate within us that wants to treat God the same way. I mean, mm-hmm. we often yeah. at times think of our relationship with God in the same way as people who've already been reconciled back to God through faith in Jesus, been given life, been called righteous, we're now sons and daughters of God. Like somehow in the midst of those truths and realities, we still feel like we have to earn God's pleasure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I think that, I mean, it, it could be reflected from the same heart. You know, we tell kids like, you don't get gifts I mean, we don't really do that, really. I mean, right. you know, mm-hmm. I can't think of a parent I've ever known who's like, I don't give my kids gifts because they were really bad this year. But <laughs> yeah. that's the, you know, that's the story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that comes from the original. You said something about the the Dutch stories in that. Yeah. But I think I think the the danger for us as parents and just people in general who are teaching this to kids is we don't want to mix those two stories together. Right. To your point, Ryan, there's nothing wrong with the cultural viewpoint of Santa as no. far as it being like a a cultural celebration of this holiday, but when we begin to mix Santa with the characteristics of God, it begins to get really confusing for people. Yeah, I I don't have a problem with talking about Frosty the Snowman or watching that cartoon or building a snowman and imagining it, but there isn't the same kind of mythology or lore attached to it, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, The thing that's, that's interesting, like, uh, we said this already a couple of times. I think it's important that we say it again without going too many more minutes, but Christmas is about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and so uh, do Santa, talk about Santa, but don't, I don't know, like give gifts. Yeah. Like, yeah. Did, did you know like uh, that the Puritans, when they left England, so the Puritans who were staying in England and then the Puritans who came to the States in both, or they weren't in the States, but you know what I mean. Uh, in both cases, they forbade Christmas Hmm. Um, because they felt it detracted from Christ. And I, and I, I think that that was probably a knee-jerk reaction and an overreaction, uh, you know, to it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I don't... And maybe contextualized culturally as well. You know, maybe yeah. this is like the reformers saying, we don't want to worship the saints, so yeah. we're going to... Yeah, yeah, and, and maybe, maybe it had. Maybe it had gotten way too out of hand, yeah. and, and the solution was to just put an end to right. it instead of trying to tweak right. their thoughts. But that's yeah. not where we are now. No, not Gosh. at all. And what we would want you guys to do who are listening is like, we just want to kind of, we just kind of want to prime the pump a little bit in terms of thinking about this, where as we enter this holiday season that like, it's crazy to me. Uh, So the gift giving started with the idea that St. Nick was generous Mm -hmm. and that he gave gifts to poor. So originally the gifts were about giving to the poor. Um, which I think all of us could get behind, you know, and, Absolutely. And, mm-hmm. and like the angel trees and the Salvation Army or whatever your source is. Like uh, I have a friend who I don't think would call themselves a believer, but they even posted on their Instagram today, like this is a season for giving. Yeah. And I think that there's kind of that mindset. And so like, uh, I think that that's fine. You know, I think that some people have said, well, the wise men brought gifts to Jesus. And so there's that. I think some people have said, you know, uh, that Jesus is God's gift to us. Mm-hmm. And so, so there's, again, it's kind of like the day. There's a whole bunch of different reasons that you could argue for giving gifts. But like, uh, like I think we don't have to really even come up with a reason. Here, listen, like, don't, don't feel guilty and don't feel a need to try to justify these things. What we're saying is that these things inherently aren't bad things, provided that Christmas the aim of Christmas is Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, I don't know, I, I, feel like, I feel like we can be too judgmental, if not of others, of ourselves. Yeah, yeah, and I think this is one of those things that, because you said this isn't necessarily right or wrong, I think this is a wisdom issue for us as, especially for those of us as parents who, in the season, or you know, we talk about Santa and things like that with our kids a lot. I think it's a wisdom issue. And I think that, from, from, from my perspective, the most important thing to consider is, 
not whether or not my kids are going to get, get made fun of at school, which I'll tell you this, none of my kids have gotten made fun of at school for, <laughs> for Santa. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's because they're punks like their dad and wouldn't take it anyways. <laughs> but, um, and the other question, the other concern I hear from people is oh, I want my kids to be able to enjoy you know, the nuances sure. of the season. So let me just tell you, fine to think those things, but listen, if, if those things supersede your goal as a parent of showing your sons and daughters mm. who God is and yep. by his grace giving us Jesus, then all those things are worthless. Like if, if you're going to sacrifice the gospel for a season like this, that's mm -hmm. outrageous and yeah. dumb and stupid. And you should feel guilty if that's your yeah. heart. But what we're saying is, is don't feel guilty for Santa. We're just trying to encourage you in the midst of the celebration of all the cultural things right. to remember that ultimately this is about Jesus. Right. So question for you guys then, I bet as myself listening, and like you mentioned earlier, I'm not a real parent yet. Um, <laughs> just have an infant. That was like quote from <laughs> me. Yeah. Uh, so thinking about the future, we were asked recently by uh, by someone asking, like, what kind of traditions are you going to do as the loves? Yep. What are you guys going to do? And so we're thinking through and praying through what that looks like for us. What does the Christmas season look like for us? And so question for you guys, I bet there's plenty of people listening as well. Like, what do you guys do in your households? Yeah. What is I mean, everything you had just said, every, the heart behind it being Jesus, but still participating in a culture that may or may not reflect that at all. How do you guys uphold Jesus in your household? You want me to take it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, like you said, Micah, I grew up, I mean, we did Santa. We did the whole bit. We left out carrots for the reindeer. It was fun, you know? Um, I didn't have a crisis of faith when I learned that Santa wasn't real, but I did have some friends who did. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I planned on getting married and having kids and doing Santa. And summer or Christmas of 97, when I was hanging out with my college friend, roommate, Scott Donahoe, he was a single uh, child and had grown up in a pastor's home. And I just said, will you do Santa? He had just gotten engaged. I said, will you do Santa? And he goes, no. He goes, I can't find the room in my heart where it's okay to intentionally deceive my child for eight to 10 years. Um, he goes, I just, I can't justify that. And I had never considered that before. And, and so Michelle and I made the decision that we wouldn't ever do Santa like that. We've talked about Santa. We've told our kids, some of your friends at school believe in it. Don't ruin it for them. Like, but I, I made a commitment a long time ago that I wanted to always tell my boys the truth. So whenever they come to me and ask me any question, now some might be a little out of their depth, but I always tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. I might have to say it in a different way or not give all the information, you know, like when yeah. you get the where do babies come from question or whatever, depending on their age, but like. We're gonna let you take that one, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, but I always wanna tell them the truth. And I want them to trust me always because I know there are a lot of kids who don't trust their parents mm -hmm. for different reasons. And, and I didn't ever wanna be that for my kids. So for me, it was really a decision not about I think some people go, you know, well, Santa and Satan, they're the same letters. Like, it wasn't that for me. It was never that. It really was about wanting to build trust in my relationship with my kids. And so yeah. Michelle and I just, we, we don't do Santa, but we have a lot of, we put up Christmas trees and Michelle loves to decorate. Mm -hmm. And the boys have been begging for years to do Christmas lights. And I told them once they're old enough to get up on the ladder and help me do it, we'll do it. So we're doing it this year. Oh. Um, and, uh, and, and so like, uh, and then we do, we watch a couple of Christmas movies every year. Uh, the boys really like Elf and they do like Home Alone. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we do Christmas cookies with everybody. And so like, I mean, we have a lot of traditions that we do around the season, but throughout the whole season, I always remind them that the importance is that what we are celebrating here, and I always tell them too that, but Christ probably wasn't born in December, <laughs> but, but we're celebrating this because Christ is valuable to us and we want to remember Christ yeah. and his birth and his death and like who he was and yeah. so, and who he is. and so. That's kind of some of the stuff we do. I think uh, <clears throat> for us, the same we ask the same questions, like how do we want to handle things like Santa with our boys? And so let me just make a point before I talk about our traditions. Um, my boys, every year, they hunt Easter eggs. Yeah. Cammie's mm -hmm. mom sets out Easter eggs and they love it partly because it's a Easter egg hunt. It's fun to find Easter eggs and it has candy. And probably also because there's one egg for each of them that has like 10 or sometimes $20. And yeah, you that's awesome. It. I've never once heard my boys go, Dad, do eggs really come 
from rabbits. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've never heard them go, does the Easter egg bunny like actually leave these eggs out? The so Easter egg they bunny. Still, is that what it is? The Easter, <laughs> the Easter egg, bunny. Easter bunny. Yeah, yeah Easter, Easter egg Easter bunny. bunny. <laughs> is the, there's two of them. Is the yeah. Easter huevos bunny actually leave them? <laughs> but I, so I think that there's an aspect of, of Santa, and I don't know why this is culturally where we feel like it's different than the Easter bunny where for our kids to enjoy the nuances of Santa Claus in the season, somehow we have to make Santa real. Yeah. Even though it's not that way for the Easter, like none of our kids think that the Easter bunny is real, but they mm-hmm. still celebrate that. So that's how we decided to go about Santa. Yeah. Is that um, kind of carrying on the tradi- tradition, we'd known, I'd known that there was this idea that St. Nick was this generous guy and that he was the kind of the forefront of the of the myth of Santa Claus. And so, you know, to carry that on, we, we don't mind at all letting the stories of Santa Claus be gift giving and sure. mm-hmm. climbing down the chimney. Cause I mean, that might be the most outrageous thing about Santa Claus. Like if anybody has ever actually looked <laughs> in a chimney, it's a pipe, it's not actually bricks, you know? <laughs> yeah. So like, anyways, so what we do around Santa Claus is we don't ever talk about Santa Claus as like a real person. We talk about him as the myth. Now, whether like Hayes is six right now, um, I'm sure he knows Santa Claus isn't real cause it's, he's old enough, but we never said, hey, Santa Claus is real or hey, Santa Claus isn't real. We just spoke of Santa Claus as part of the cultural tradition, yeah. but never made him a real person. He's a yeah. cartoon, he's part of the movies. But um, when we do like Christmas day presents, we do Christmas day presents. I know a lot of you do Christmas Eve presents, but we do Christmas day presents. And the boys will leave out um, cookies and Dr. Pepper because they know that Santa Claus <laughs> yeah. is going to bring them <laughs> gifts. And so it kind yeah. of has become a joke and yeah. for years in our house where they, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Claus are going to come and they and sometimes they'll even like eat the cookie and drink the Dr. Pepper before they even go to bed, and like <laughs> yeah. celebrating. And so we try to bring in the fun part of all these yeah. Christmas traditions to our family. And we enjoy that together without the necessity of making Santa Claus God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, when you're talking about someone who can go around the whole world in one night, who brings gifts, who's generous, who doesn't overlook anybody, these are all similar attributes uh, to what we say Christ is and yeah. who He is, you know? Um, and and so it is, I think it can be a sticky point. Uh, mm-hmm. I another thought, so I, we have family that um, just gives tons of presents, like, you know, tons and tons of presents. And I know a lot of you parents maybe have, excuse me, felt this before, but there's a part of me and my wife, Cammie, who sometimes wonder, like, is it, is it too easy to lose Jesus at Christmas in the mm-hmm. midst of presents? Look, here's the reality. The boys, our boys, your kids, almost every kid is going to be most excited about waking up and opening presents. Yep. I used to feel guilty about that, and then I realized that doesn't necessarily necessarily deter from Jesus in the season. Right. Let them be excited about it. But I think what, to our point with this episode, a simpler viewpoint of Christmas is it's about Jesus. So yep. let them wake up and be excited about gifts and Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, however you decide to do it, get together as a family to remember the birth of Jesus. Listen, wait doesn't necessarily mean more time. Right. You know what I mean? Like you might open presents for an hour and you might you know, read the Christmas story or whatever you do, it might take you 10 or 15 minutes. The weight of that, the weight of Jesus doesn't rest in the fact that he gets more time yeah, in yeah. those things. I think it's a hard attitude of us as people and as parents where what we convey to our kids is if the presents are gone, if we don't ever get presents again, we still have this gracious gift yeah. of God in Jesus. Exactly. That the presents are fun and exciting, but at the end of the day, what really gives us value and worth is Jesus. Well, to that point that it's okay to do the presents with the kids because they're going to be excited about that. You and I have done ministry together for 18 years, and I used to go to camps and hate the fog or the smoke machines and all the lights and the lasers and all those kinds of things. And I'd preach at these camps and they'd do all this stuff. And I will never forget what a worship pastor buddy of mine said. He was there with their church's youth at this camp. And I was like, man, all this stuff bothers me. I said, I said, talk to me about it because I knew that he liked it. And he goes, you know, look, they had like three kids. And he said, uh, he goes, sometimes my wife and I go to McDonald's with the kids and they run around and they scream and they play. And he goes, and I love my wife. And he goes, we're having McDonald's, but I I love my (laughs) wife, you know? And he goes, sometimes we leave the kids with a babysitter and we get dressed up and we go to a nice restaurant where there's a candle on the table and it's a little bit more dim. And he goes, and I love my wife. And I don't love her more at the nice restaurant than I do at McDonald's, but there's something about sometimes setting the mood. Mm. And, uh, And it changed my perspective completely. And so if, if you will keep Christmas about Christ, 
there's nothing wrong with setting the mood of a celebration and a party and a, having it be celebratory and having it be something that you're excited about um, because it's like you're setting the mood, you're setting the yeah. table for an intentional focus on it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now, now what are you gonna do with Riley when she's seven months old at Christmas? You're gonna get a Santa Claus outfit. Yeah, and you're gonna... <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Jump out uh, of the closet. You know, it's funny. Yeah, this this year, I mean, we'll just do. She's not gonna remember it. Like, <laughs> there's so much pressure from like a lot of friends and family. They're like, "What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do?" Like, yeah. It doesn't matter what we do. Like, it really yeah. doesn't. There's just gonna be cute pictures of her opening presents, regardless. Yeah. Like, yeah. we already I sent you guys some. Like, I know. there's already some cute pictures of family that won't be. We won't see at Christmas time. They gave her presents around Thanksgiving. So, that's what's gonna be. And so I think that as, as we move forward, um, yeah, I mean, both you guys. Brilliantly summarized, I think the stance of what we're sh- what we're striving to portray as a simpler view of Christmas is yeah. put Christ at the forefront and be consistent. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, we 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 already we're already involved in this culture. Um, we're already involved in a culture where we have Halloween and fall festivals and we get dressed up and get candy, but we're not necessarily celebrating All Hallows Eve. So like, right. there's an aspect of it where we're still part of the culture. Yeah. Um. So so yeah. So you guys listening, I I. I I meant to say this earlier, but I'm just, I got too caught up in PS5s and stuff like that. <laughs> um, we are at Simpler Pod on Facebook and Instagram, and we we acknowledge that in the midst of this conversation, this, this I'm not, to fool you guys, this isn't the first time we've had this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> we've been talking about, I've, I've asked these questions before. Uh, I remember traveling with you, Micah, like we've done denials and stuff in the wintertime where I've asked specific questions about how do you guys approach Santa Claus? How do you do these types of things? We've had these conversations sure. for years. Some of you guys listening and watching, first time you've heard some of this. Yeah. Very first time you've been confronted with this. And a lot of the times, there's gonna be a lot of pushback. There's gonna be, uh, and there's gonna be a lot of questions. Sure. And if you're feeling either one of those things, that doesn't hurt our feelings at all. If um, if you're not feeling any of those things, that's awesome. Like either way, wherever you are, how you're responding, we just are excited that you're able to listen, you're able to watch. And one thing that we want for you guys is, if this is brand new, or if there's just an aspect of it that you're not really sure about, ask us questions. Um, on Facebook and Instagram, we are at SimplerPod. Um, send us a message. I'll be posting stuff about this episode. Comment on those posts. Um, and also to encourage you guys as well, if there's any stories you want to share with other comments you see on there, do that. <laughs> yeah. If somebody has a question and there's a specific thing about it, I shared a story about being Santa Claus. I shared a story about some friends at daycare. Share those stories. These are things. These are ways that we're able to learn and grow as Christians and that our community does doesn't stop at the front door of our church. Right. Our community continues on. We here are all brothers in Christ. You guys listening who have placed your face, face, <laughs> who have placed your faith in the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ, acknowledging who He is. Um, you're our brothers and sisters, and we can grow and we can learn together in this unified body that we have. And we, during this season, we we praise God and we celebrate the birth of Him. And yeah, we get gifts. Yeah, we get good food. Yeah, we share smiles. Also, I meant to say this earlier. Hmm. It's so fun. My, I meant oh, I meant to make a total joke about it. I totally forgot. But. I'll be really serious for a second. Don't be those people that feel the need to, because Christmas is about Jesus, make all these cultural things somehow twisted to Jesus. Did you, have, you guys see all the descriptions about the candy canes? It's oh, a yeah. shepherd's crook, and he's the great shepherd, and the, the blood of Christ goes through, and the purity of Christ flows up, and all this other stuff. And I don't know if that's true, but don't force it down people's throat. Just let, let them enjoy a peppermint. Just let them enjoy yeah. it. Like, if you really want to talk about Jesus, don't point to the candy cane. Point, Point to, to Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk about Jesus. Talk about his birth. Talk about what it means. Um, and yes, and I think that uh, I want you guys to pour in questions because next episode of December, we're going to be talking about your questions. Yeah. We're going to be walking through some of those things. And Please so send us questions. Send us questions at Simpler Pod, Facebook and Instagram. Comment on the post. Send a message. Let us know. Follow while you're there. Subscribe while you're there. All that fun stuff. And and not just questions about this specific episode, but Christmas in general or the holiday season. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. we want to address those in the next one for you guys that will be coming out the and, week of Christmas. And I know we have a very small percentage outside of the U.S., but if you have questions about your culture, like let us know that too. If it, if you don't have Santa Claus, if you don't have we some of these arms, if it's not December cool. 25th, if you, yeah, exactly. We want to learn more and we want to talk about it more. That's what we want to do. Um, so Micah, do you have a simpler hack for us as we Oh uh, Yeah, I got, a, I got a couple. Um, <clears throat> I don't really have any good house, like keep your house up, simpler hacks, but I do have one for a couple Christmas decorations slash Christmas baking, which is weird to even say. So <laughs> Christmas decorations are insanely expensive. So two thoughts on Christmas decorations. Um, we started doing this a couple years ago, but if you're willing to be on the ball, if you will go to the stores the week after Christmas, like if you need another Christmas tree, 
buy it the week after Christmas. It's like 75% mm -hmm. off. Yeah. Yes, so true, true. It, it, if, you want, some money. if you want to buy Christmas lights, but you're not ready for it this year, fantastic wait till the week after Christmas. It's gonna be like 75% off and you have it for the next year. Um, as far as decorations go, I got one like cool tip I saw somewhere. Um, if you wanna make a Christmas wreath, but don't wanna spend the money on like buying a wreath, and you're someone who has a real Christmas tree, you're probably gonna get that Christmas tree home and have to trim some of the branches off to make it fit in your area. And what you can do with those trim branches is actually put them together um, nice. and make a Christmas wreath. So it's a- it's So a, that the Christmas tree can witness its mutilated offspring <laughs> hanging over on the- Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And then a baking one just for Christy Dyer is- uh, um, I saw, Hey Christy. I saw this somewhere too. If you wanna make Christmas tree cupcakes, you take a- uh, ice cream cone, the sugar cones that are just like mm -hmm. straight and you put it on top of the cupcake and then you decorate that in green icing and it looks like you got a Christmas tree. Oh yeah, tree. that's awesome. Cupcake. I like it. That's dope. Yeah, we did the uh, the first one you said about saving after Christmas. We did that last year because Hannah hated my five foot tree. Too small, way too small. She was like, I need that big tree. So we measured how big of a tree we could get the, <laughs> the week of Christmas. That way we knew the 26th and 27th were going to Walmart and uh, measured it. And then this year was the first year we got out of the box, did everything. We got it built and we put the star on and it's tilted It's tilted on the ceiling. <laughs> and we're like, no, we measured. What Aww. happened? And Hannah goes, let me see something. And she just grabs the inside of that tree and just shakes it. And you hear, doo, doo, and it will click down two That's more awesome. clicks. And, and it locked into place. Now it fits. Nice. So it is literally, we got this much space between uh, between the ceiling and the star. We're good. Another nice. quick story about Christmas trees. I forgot last year to buy another Christmas tree. Our, our living room ceiling is um, sloped up. And so there's a part of our living room where the tree goes. It's actually probably like 10 feet. Like it gets real That's high. Awesome. Um, Easily. So easily, so but we have a six foot tree, or yeah. seven foot tree, sorry, seven foot tree. Anyways, and I forgot last year we were gonna buy like a nine foot tree to make it fill up the space and we got the tree out this year and I was like, dang it, crap, I forgot to. And so as a woodworker, I was like, I bet I can build something to make that thing taller. And I had this box idea in my head and so I went out to the, to the workshop and just had some scrap stuff and threw it together real quick and uh, put it in and it didn't work. Oh, and, no. But in classic Micah form, I was like, I'm not gonna get whooped by this box. And so no <laughs> joke, it took me three hours, three hours to finally get that stupid box right. Three hours. At one point, Cammie was gonna say something to me. I was like, stop, stop, I'm gonna finish this. You know, like, <laughs> not too much, I'm, I'm gonna get it done. And I whooped that stinking box and now we have a nine foot tree. Nice. That's awesome. Nice. Oh <laughs> uh, man, so yes, uh, so even though you got to see this beautiful scenery here. We're not at Steven's studio. Go give Steven a shout out. Yeah, he's gonna yeah, be yeah. editing all this audio. Thank you, Steven. Uh, he's the bomb. So go to at the Garden Audio on Instagram. Let him know you love him. Say Merry Christmas to him. And again, ask us questions because that's gonna fuel our next episode. Anything regards to Christmas, anything regards to this season, um, ask us all the questions. Subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And if any of those places don't work out for you, go to anchor.fm slash simpler. And we'll talk to you guys later. Sounds good. Merry more crust. <laughs>